My name is Chris Kovach. I am the sales representative in Northeastern Florida for Toby Dynavox. Today what we're going to be talking about is how to get started with Communicator 5 and how to properly use the track status box and calibration for eye gaze interaction. Now my desktop that you see here is actually my computer. It is not a speech device. So it will look a little bit different than yours. Uh, I am assuming at this point that you have taken the equipment out of the box, installed the batteries, and have enough battery power to get the device turned on and up and running. If you do not, you could always plug in the charger to the wall and then plug it into the side of the device and run it off of the charger until the batteries are full enough to use on their own. So once you start up the device, you'll come to your Windows desktop screen. As I said, it will look similar to this, uh, but it will be a green background. But what you're looking for is the Communicator 5 symbol over here. This is actually the speech software we're going to be utilizing today. So what I'd like you to do is set the device on a table, or if you have the mounting system already set up, you could clip it into the mounting system, and then come over and double click the Communicator 5 software and open it up. Now when I open up Communicator 5 software, it's going to look a little bit different, as this is not the first time I've opened the software on my computer. It will take a few moments to load, uh, and the first time you go through it, you will be prompted with an initial startup page of connecting to a wireless connection in your home. If you have a wireless connection in your home, please feel free to enter that password, uh, I'm sorry, locate the wireless connection um, by using the steps on the screen and then entering the password to connect to your wireless network. Once you have done so, you'll then be prompted to answer a few more questions, uh, select a few more checkboxes regarding that you've read the information, uh, explained that the device will either be mounted or will be portable, and then you can continue on through the system. The page we're looking to get to is the new user startup page. So what I'm going to do is create a new user to get us to a very similar looking page. So when you get to a page that looks very similar to this, uh, you will see the username profile, or user profile name, I'm sorry, the voice selection, and the input method. And you'll see that there are only three steps at the top. This screen, this small box here, will actually take up your entire screen on the device. So what we need to do at this point is type in uh, the user's name. I'm just going to call myself Tom for today. We can then verify or select different voices. I'm just going to select a gentleman's voice, and then we can determine which input method we're going to use. If you have a device that does not have gaze interaction installed, you'll see red text at the bottom that says no gaze interaction uh, connected. So if you're using touchscreen, you would want to drop the input method down and make it uh, a touch slash mouse uh, access method. If you are using eye gaze, you can just leave it on gaze interaction as a default, and you can choose to calibrate from here and change your uh, selection method as well. Dwell is the selection method used when you are looking at a, an icon for a certain period of time, and once that period of time elapses, it clicks the button for you. Switch allows you to stare at a location on the screen or an icon on the screen and physically hit a switch with your hand, elbow, knee, uh, or anything else to make the selection. So you would look at what you want to select and then hit the switch to, uh, to actually make the selection. Blink allows you to look at the icon you would like to select and then make a conscious blinking motion to act as the selection method there. The most common is dwell, so we're going to just stick with dwell at this point and we're going to hit next. Here Communicator 5 tries to break us down into one of three categories. Emerging communication, which is basic activity, visual scenes, and communication pages. This is really a cause and effect. Starting to get used to using the system uh, and beginning uh, access for communication. Our next is symbol communication, where we use products such as the Sonoflex, Sonolexis, or Literacy, and this revolves a lot more around uh, specifically symbols, core words, fringe words, and is kind of our intermediate step between emerging communication and text communication. And the final step is text communication, where we use things such as SonoKey, SonoScribe, uh, standard uh, QWERTY keyboard, and programming in full text messages, um, not really utilizing any symbols or cause and effect. This is really more of a keyboarding based area to, to function. So what that's exactly where we're going to go right now is into the keyboarding function. 
So we're going to choose text communication and we're going to hit next. What this describes now is the quick menu option. So this is new to Communicator 5 and if you hit the button on the left hand side of the device it has three dots. Uh, you can quickly get to this quick menu guide at any time within the Communicator 5 software or if you touch and hold the screen it will pop up the menu or if you have a keyboard or a mouse plugged into the screen you could hit Control M or you could right click the, uh, the mouse button to get to the menu as well. So we provide many ways for you to get to the quick menu option within the Communicator 5 software. So now we'll hit finish and it'll take a few seconds uh, to load up a default home page for us. So as you can see I have Gaze Interaction turned on for my computer and it's already picking up my eyes. So I am going to go in there and I'm going to disable that for the time being or put it on pause. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is step out of the system and I'm going to show you how to better calibrate for the eyes. Um, if you are using touch communication, at this point you're up and running on a default home page. Uh, you have access to a standard keyboard, a way in my phrases to program uh, additional categories and phrases into the system. If your device is open or unlocked, uh, or if you've paid that $49 to get that feature, you can potentially start working on email, Facebook, Skype, text messaging, and calling with Bluetooth. And you also have a myriad of other options as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit Communicator. I'm going to minimize my screen. And on your desktop, you will also see this red uh, logo with a white eye. It's our Gaze Interaction logo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up. It's going to give me a little bit more of an in-depth option for my calibration. So at this point, what I'm going to be, do is since we set up a profile, you'll see that I'm, it currently loads me onto my profile of Tom, which is great because if we need to change profiles later on, we can set up different calibrations for different users, uh, user profiles within the system. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stay on the calibration tab over here and we're going to utilize the track box or the track status box. Now what this track status box does is it shows us where our eyes are in proximity to the device and if the device is picking it up properly. So our goal is to have both white circles which represent our eyes and you can see as I close one eye and then the other those white circles disappear. If I blink completely, they disappear. Uh, you can also tell if someone is having a hard time calibrating or getting in proper position with the device, or if the device is having difficulty picking up their eyes, uh, if the white circles flutter, if they do not stay a solid white. Uh, so that is our goal, is to get the, uh, the two circles representing our eyes cl as close to the center of the screen as possible. As, I'm sorry, as close to the black center of the black screen as possible. And if you see that white triangle on the right hand side, what that tells us is how close or how far we are from the device and what the device is telling us the proper distance is. So as you can see, as I move to and from uh, with my head from the device, that triangle goes into different locations. Our goal is to have the device approximately 18 to 24 inches away so that that, green, uh, that white triangle is in the green location on that bar. This is typically achieved uh, this setup here is typically achieved when the top of the, the device is about at the same level as the client's forehead and is about 18 to 24 inches away. That's approximately where I am with my computer now. And it's a good reference point for you to start with, uh, with your client or your loved one. It is able to be tweaked. You are able to move things around. I have had many clients uh, have access with uh, you know, being higher in the box or being lower in the box. It's, it's all a personal situation, but this is really where we want to get started uh, and is a very good starting point. So once we have our track status box uh, centered and in the green, we can close that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our settings. So currently we're set up with nine calibration points. Now that will give us the highest quality calibration as it's the most number of points on the screen that we can calibrate. But if we have someone who's struggling, or is younger and we have uh, attention issues just because following a dot around the screen nine times can be uh, less intriguing for some people 
especially those in our younger demographic, we do have the option to change it from five locations or to two locations. Uh, you can change the calibration area, the sound feedback, and the stimulus type, uh, the color of the stimulus. You can actually put in pictures or little videos as well if you're using someone uh, or using something that would be more uh, engaging to someone. You do have options to change those uh, to an image or a video and then load those videos from uh, a jump drive or download them onto the computer and then pull them in here. In most cases though we don't need to do that. We're just going to stick with nine calibration points and continue on with the calibration. So as you can see here these are where the nine points will be on the screen. This is tracking both my left eye and my right eye. So when I hit the calibration button, you're going to see a large version of this track box that's going to appear, and it's going to pick up my eyes. Once it does pick up my eyes and knows that I'm in a decent location distance-wise from the device, it will start the calibration. Calibration screen will be black, and very quickly an orange dot will come out onto the screen and kind of pulsate. Our goal is to look at the very center of that orange uh, dot where there is another little black dot. Follow that around the screen at all nine locations. Uh, every time that the dot is getting ready to move, you'll hear an audible ding sound. So what we're going to do now is you're going to watch me calibrate this device. So I'm going to hit the calibrate button and continue with my calibration. Okay, so now that it's calibrated my eyes to the machine, what it's doing is it's processing the calibration to tell me what kind of feedback it picked up. Uh, did it pick up my eyes in all nine locations? Uh, do we have any points that we're going to struggle on? Uh, and where are we? So right now, as you can see, the background to both eyes is green. And what that tells you at the bottom is that this is a, sec is a successful calibration and it's fairly high quality. Our goal with the calibration is to get these lines right here, which represent the movement of our eyes as close to the, uh, the inside of these white circles as possible. So as you can see, I have some locations of the screen that are a little bit better for me than other locations of the screen. And you may find that same thing happen to you or your loved one. Now, if we have more lines uh, outside of the box or we have areas where it didn't pick up our eyes at all, we may get a yellow calibration or even a red calibration. Just because it's a red or a yellow calibration doesn't mean that it will not work. They are still successful calibrations. It's just saying, hey, there's a few points that could probably be improved upon. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to improve those specific points. So for me personally, I struggled a little bit more on the left side of the screen, particularly with my right eye, but I'm going to redo the, just those three points. So what I can do from within the software here is just select the points I want to do so I don't have to redo all nine, and I'm going to select Improve Points. And what this does is it tries to just recalibrate those specific areas of the screen to allow for easier access and hopefully less frustration later on within the software. And as you can see, I did improve a few of them. This one got much better. This one got a little bit better. I still struggled a little bit with this guy in the lower left-hand corner. And this is completely natural. Not everybody is going to get a great calibration as far as all the lines being within the circle all the time. Everybody's eyes move and shake uh, no matter what. So expect a little bit of you know, what I call noise uh, outside of these white circles. So if we're happy with our calibration, we're going to hit OK down here in the corner. We're going to go back into our speech software. So at this point, I have myself currently paused. Uh, what we can do to unpause is go into settings, gaze interaction settings, and we can click resume. And that'll take those pause bars away. So now, right now, I should be navigating, yep, with just my eyes. So as you can see me controlling the device right now, I am using just my eyes to do this. 
So I'm just going to try and type hello. And there you go. So at this point, I am live with my eyes. We are navigating through. I can get to any location of the screen I want. I can get to, it seems to be accessing any of the softwares. And this is what you would want to check with your customer or with your loved one to make sure that they can get where they want to go with as little frustration as possible. So if we were using the keyboard as our primary means of communication, and say this was struggling a little bit for me. These buttons were a little small, or I was looking at the G, but I was trying to get to the H, or it kept bouncing back and forth on me. Uh, if that was frustrating, and we have a good calibration, and we're pretty happy with how that looks, then maybe it's time for me to, I'm gonna pause that with my eyes real quick. Uh, maybe it's time to introduce a slightly larger keyboard until we get used to how the software works, and we can practice with one keyboard and then switch back to another. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. You can go into settings, you can go to change keyboard, and you can take a look at the grid keyboard, which is a larger ABC style keyboard with more space between each button, allowing you a little bit of an easier way to isolate each individual letter. Or you can go to large key. Large key shows you different sections of the alphabet in which you would uh, select the letter you're looking for. So if we were spelling hello, I would choose this first box here because that's where the H is located. Once I go in, the buttons get uh, rather large, they have nice spacing between them, and it makes it easier for me to isolate that H because ultimately our goal is communication. So if we're struggling to get the communication on one of the smaller buttons uh, or one of the smaller keyboards with smaller buttons, it may be a good idea to start with a larger keyboard and be able to actually communicate and get our message across rather than getting frustrated with the device at this point. We can always switch, we can always practice with the other keyboards, and as we get used to the system, uh, potentially come back down to a smaller button where we feel, you know, when we feel more comfortable. So, the last thing I want to talk about is how you can check the track status box um, after you've done all this calibration. You should not have to do the calibration again unless something has changed, such as a new pair of glasses. Uh, maybe not wearing our glasses if we're using uh, contacts, that will change the calibration. You may have to create a separate profile and do that process again uh, for a situation with glasses versus without glasses. But a quick way, if you are uh, in the same setup and using the same calibration, maybe you, you know we're just moving around within the house or within the facility and we want to make sure we're in the proper position. On your device, you have a couple ways of getting to that track status box pretty quickly. The quickest way is hitting the two dots on the left hand side of the device itself. Uh, right above where that quick menu guide was, you'll see uh, the three dots for the quick menu guide, then two dots. And when you hit those two dots, it will bring you up the track status box. Now I don't have those two dots on my computer, but what I can do is I can go into my settings and into my gaze interaction settings, and I can hit track status from here as well. So we have multiple ways of getting to the track status box. So as you set this up for your customer or for your loved one, what you really want to make sure you're doing is making sure that the calibration is solid and that we're putting them in a proper position every time to be successful with the device. So as long as we're in this location, we can see both white circles, the triangle is in the green, we should be in a pretty good location. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks and have a great day.